This is a story of three Dutch men and a yacht. Cherko Jorgens, Jan Vink and Robert Holterman. The three friends all had experience with yachts and often gathered together over a bottle or two of the finest Dutch beer to exchange their experiences. Jan had owned a number of fast open express yachts but was growing concerned about the safety features for his young family. He would really prefer higher bulkheads and just didn't need the speed anymore. Chirko was growing tired of his vacation being spoiled by some part of the yacht just not working. So he wanted a vessel that took redundancy systems to a new level. Nothing should be able to spoil his time on board. Robert had noted how many yachts need to keep a chase boat following them around because there wasn't enough room on board for a large tender. It's worth noting that Robert Holterman is from a well-respected family of yacht builders. All three agreed that an expensive item like a luxury yacht should look beautiful. And it should be built to a design that gives more space to the parts that really are used by an owner and less space for the parts that are used less. And this is the result. Lady Fleur, a 105 foot yacht that's the first offering of the company that these friends put together, Extreme Yachts. It is absolutely extraordinary. They've taken the rule book for yacht building, they've ripped it up, they've thrown it out of the window and they've started again from page one. I cannot wait to show you all through this yacht from the top to the bottom and then afterwards I'm going to show you some technical details that you just won't believe. And the top really is the best place to start since undoubtedly the sun deck is an area that most owners do enjoy the most. This is such a spacious area with a very elegant and modern helm station. A dining table next to a bar. Plenty of seating. A large spa tub and even more sunbathing space. The sun deck is flanked on either side by stairs leading down to the aft deck. Now this part of the yacht is so innovative and hides so many secrets that you'll have to watch to the end of the video to see everything. Inside, we already start to see a few differences from traditional yacht building. The designers placed the galley immediately to starboard in the entrance. I've not seen this on a 100 foot yacht before, although many smaller yachts do do the same thing. It gives great access to the aft deck dining table and makes for a social area to chat with your guests. Not everybody believes that a galley should be hidden away. The kitchen is at the heart of so many people's homes. Why shouldn't it be at the heart of your yacht too? Moving forward, a short corridor takes you to the owner's stateroom. 100 foot yachts are always on the edge of whether it's possible to position the owner's stateroom on the main deck or whether it should be below deck. But the three friends of Extreme Yachts have done a wonderful job of positioning it here. Returning to the lounge, a central staircase takes us to a mid-level helm station. This is what's called a raised pilot house. Although often raised pilot houses do come at the expense of a large sun deck. That's not the case here. Moving below deck, we have four well-proportioned staterooms. Each one, of course, with its own just as well-proportioned ensuite bathroom. I do know that many of you enjoy seeing the crew accommodation though, and this is particularly impressive. Extreme yachts offer this with two alternatives. So you can have three cabins for a crew of six, well, since the owner of Lady Fleur is a very hands-on owner, he has accommodation for a crew of four. Happy crew, happy owner.
That's the day head, by the way. You can access it from the outside of the yacht or from the inside. But I did say at the beginning of this video that there are certain technical details on this vessel that you just won't believe. So prepare to be incredulous. Let's start with this. This yacht has no engine room as such, but rather four distinct technical compartments. One compartment has two air conditioning units and two water makers. You'll remember that earlier I did say how much Cherko wanted to have redundancy systems on board. The yacht has two of almost everything, including two bow thrusters and two stern thrusters. The second compartment has pretty much everything electrical, battery chargers, inverters, again, two of everything. In between the two compartments and the crew quarters is this large water toy garage, where there's currently a three and a half meter Williams tender, a wakeboard, and a large jet ski. There's room, as a matter of fact, for two jet skis here, and they all launch through these side shell doors. But it gets better. Just take a look at this in the lower part of the aft deck where previously that huge 10 meter tender was located. I did say that this is an area that hides secrets and I wasn't exaggerating. On any other yacht of this size, if you have a major problem, so major that you need to change an engine, you're looking at weeks, if not months in a shipyard. Not on the Extreme 105. Just take a look at this. Each side of the aft deck has its own engine room hatch for incredibly easy access to the Volvo 750 horsepower engines. Here too, the yacht building rulebook gives you a list of three manufacturers to choose from, MTU, Caterpillar and MAN. The Dutch friends are no respecters of rulebooks though and they chose Volvo who have an outstanding warranty of 15,000 running hours. They are so reliable that these are the engines that many commercial vessels run on, although they have been tweaked for use on the super yacht. Next to the engines are the generators, and here as well the rule book has simply been thrown away. Now, if a yacht is not diesel electric, then generally speaking, what happens is the generators feed power more or less directly to the hotel load on the yacht. That's a consistent amount of power that's available. Sometimes it will be too much power. Other times it may be too little. For example, if you have seven guests who all decide to plug in their hairdryer at the same time and put up the air conditioning on some yachts, the second generator will kick in to compensate. That's not how this yacht works though. On this yacht, the two generators feed power to a lithium polymer battery bank that always has enough to cope with all of the various loads on board. Never too much, never too little. The generators don't have to worry about supplying power for the varying loads on board. All they have to think about is keeping the battery bank charged. That's not all though. Just take a look at this. In between the two engine compartments, the entire midsection lowers into the ocean, allowing for the tender to be launched and retrieved in remarkably quick time and with a minimum of fuss. And when the tender is not on board, the effect is nothing short of magical as the final surprise reveals a catamaran set up at the stern to complement the monohull at the bow. Oh, by the way, that swimming pool has an adjustable floor for varying depths.
I've made much in this video of the three jovial Dutch friends that started Extreme Yachts, but make no mistake, they are also three highly successful and industrious businessmen. Extreme Yachts have not even started any serious marketing yet, and already they have seven yachts of various sizes in construction in their shipyard in the Netherlands. This is what can happen when three fun-loving yachtsmen get their heads together, put their ideas in motion, and simply throw away the rule book.